Welcome back, friends. This week we are getting all set up in the new shop and we had a lot of firsts. We had our first board fulfillment, we had our first sale. Davis turned the tools on for the first time and tested them all out and, and uh, got them, what do you call that? Dialed in? We also had up. our first granola bar. Yeah, clearly it's important. And don't fast forward because this is the first video with our brand new intro that we put together. Thank you so much for your help. I don't know, let's just get to it. A funny thing happened when we started facing our fears. Our dreams came true. Now, we fly into the world's most dangerous storms as hurricane hunters. We own multiple businesses as entrepreneurs, and we have an abundance left over to share with others. We have just one lesson to share. Don't follow your passion. Follow your fears and conquer them with your passion. That's how you achieve big goals. I don't have to worry about the ceiling anymore. I can just pick something up and walk. Of course it'd be the one you filmed that I dropped. Can you grab that please? That'll work. All right, so we got our very first board fulfillment request in the new shop. So I'm about to engrave and package the very first commercial space board, and I'm super excited. First board, here we go. First board! It's a big moment. So this board fulfillment was our win for Winter Wednesday in, in the stud stack. Every week we'll get in there and we all post videos about what our biggest win for the week was in our businesses. And we can kind of root each other on, hold each other accountable, and congratulate each other for the wins that we had. So if you want to be a part of a community like that, join the stud stack. The link is right below the like button. Running a business is lonely. It is so much easier if you have friends. There we go, the front of the very first board. The engraving's kind of big, don't you think? It's a little big, but I think people like to see their names like very large on the board, so. I mean, nobody uses these as cutting boards anyway. No, everybody uses these as like home decor. Very few people actually use these for what they're intended for, which kind of makes me sad, but also I think it's a compliment because they think the board looks pretty. I don't care, they paid for it. <laughs> they did. <laughs> board fulfillment, this is where we hit a crossroads because we could either spend a ton of time getting the shop set up perfectly and really getting down in the nitty gritty of how we want to do everything, or we could just get started and get out there and do what we need to do to run the business. In the past, we've spent way too much time planning and not enough time doing. So we're gonna learn from our past selves, learn from our mistakes, and just get moving. We also have rent to pay now, so there's that. So what exactly did we do to get moving? I mailed out six boards to prospective clients, and then I made 15 phone calls. <laughs> and I got the shop set up, ready to do the next batch of boards. And 
now it is time for board day, so let's get some serious board fulfillments done. Putting a rolly chair on these perfectly smooth floors in here was such a bad idea. Oh my gosh. Allow me to give you a rolly chair tour of the fulfillment station. So first off, we have a shelf with all of our boxes, our little boxes that the boards go out in, as well as our larger boxes. If we get an order of like more than two boards at a time, we'll use larger boxes. And then right next to that is the fulfillment station itself. Then you get into the computers and the actual laser engravers. And then behind me is the shelf that holds all of our uh, inventory. We've got some cutting boards there, charcuterie boards on the bottom. And then you start to get into like the shop itself. But, uh, and then there is our little ventilation tube that goes up and through the roof. And yeah, that's about it. I'm gonna just keep rolling while this thing engraves. So let's get some serious board fulfillments done. Some serious board fulfillments done. Okay, I promise that was the last one. I promise, I'm done now. Okay, so since Davis can't be trusted with the would you rather questions anymore because the last one was really gross and dumb, it's my turn to pick a question while you fulfill boards. Would you rather have the neck of a giraffe or the hands of a baby? The neck of a giraffe or the hands of a baby? Is it like 13 foot long neck? Like, I, I Or is know. it just proportional to the body? We'll say proportional to the body. Either one. So is that would only be like bad. that would only be like a what, like a three foot tall neck. Yeah, that's still like. Yeah, but like hands like a baby. Like I already need the iPhone Mini. <laughs> I don't know. It's like that... those little mini rubber hands. Have you seen those? Those little plastic like baby hands. Yeah, I guess for the clout, I would do the baby hands because I think that would do better on social media than giraffe neck. I think so too. You'd be labeled as kind of weird if you had a giraffe neck, but baby hands would be funny. What do you think? Baby hands or giraffe neck? Let us know in the comments. We'd have to fulfill some baby cutting boards with our baby hands. Are you That that on, it, that would do well on TikTok. Little whole baby thing. hands. Wax on, wax off. Genius. You're welcome. My question's already better. <laughs> so we got to try something new. Jenny just made a sale. What did you sell? I sold five boards and it was to a realtor who's already bought from us. And before she even ran out of her original 15 boards, she wanted to buy five more because she liked them so much, which is so exciting because she was not even going to buy from us in the beginning. She told me no three times. <laughs> so a new thing that we're starting is that every time somebody makes a sale in 2022, that was really loud. <laughs> <laughs> we blow off one of these confetti cannons. <laughs> And now there's a giant mess to clean up. I wonder how many times we're gonna do that. <laughs> Guys, we got two stuck in the ceiling. <laughs> yes. We don't even have a broom yet to clean this up. <laughs> no. Great idea. It's just gonna stay this way for a while. <laughs> the next morning. All right, so the big task for today is to turn this whole area into a functioning wood shop. It doesn't need to be perfect. It does not need, I'm talking to myself here. It does not need to be perfect. It does not need to be in its final form. It just needs to be functional so that we can start building things. So now I just gotta figure out an orientation and an arrangement where the existing stuff I have with maybe some extra PVC pipe can, uh, Hook all these guys together. Cut my finger on the joiner. All right, is it the best dust collection system in the world? Hardly. 
Is it full of leaks and holes? Yes. Is it routed nicely out of the way overhead in nice shiny silver HVAC ports? No, it's not. One day we'll get there, but not with this machine. So everything works, it's operational. I've got eight feet of in feed and out feed on every tool. And the one or two places where I don't have eight feet, I can very easily make eight feet because everything is still on wheels. So over the next couple of months, as we dial in exactly where every tool goes, I think it's gonna be the perfect setup to move everything around. I also put the bandsaw on this dust collector just cause and it just made sense. It was there, it was close enough. I had a piece of tube that was long enough. So anyway, two dust collection systems. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Um, yeah, so now we get to conquer the rest of the assembly and production area. All right, so I think I have accomplished my goal for this morning, um, which was to move all the tools around and get them ready to do a batch of boards from start to finish along this wall. And so let me just show you what I've done. So here's our lumber rack. So I us put that together a couple videos ago. Joiners here, planers here, miter saws here. That way we can cut and mill everything down right in one little spot, but we've still got enough room that we can move carts to hold the lumber and stuff. Got everything piped in with a dust collection system, although temporarily we got a nice tool chest to keep all of our tools straight. We got a scrap bin. Then we got our table saw, our drum sander, and our router all hooked up to that dust collector. And then we've got a nice little sanding table here so we can clamp up and sand and finish the boards here. That way, by the time the boards get down to this table and they stop right here, everything is done for boards. They can be wheeled over to the storage shelf way over there. That's where boards go when uh, they're waiting fulfillment. So we are done with the board assembly line. That's all I really wanted to do. It looks really nice. Where's the finishing going? I'm glad you asked to come with me. <laughs> This ladder represents the corner of a spray booth. We're gonna get one of those big inflatable nice. spray booths. I like it. I've seen reviews online, people either love them or hate them. So let us know down in the comments. Those big inflatable spray booths. Do you love them? Do you hate them? And okay. why? So now after a lot of work this week, we finally have cash flow moving. We have the shop set up to build stuff and Jenny's got a lead, I mean hot lead, on a couple of kitchen tables, which is one of our goals for the year is we want to release our first kitchen table product. So um, that's gonna be really exciting to build the prototypes. Make sure you subscribe so you can follow along and follow us on our journey as we're trying to chase our fears by running a business and everything involved with that. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Ask me how I do it, I just stick to the plan